All right, on this video, I'm going to show you how to thin a knife without primary bevel. A lot of people think of Japanese knives as probably something like this construction. Made with a knife with the little lines called shinogi and there's a beveling coming from here and there's a final edge. This is more like it has a primary bevel and secondary bevel. This knife does not have any prominent or the distinct line of the beveling here. It starts from the spine and gradually tapers all the way down to the edge. But like any other knives, if you keep sharpening just the edge, what can happen is that the edge becomes very thick and when you're trying to cut the carrots, what can happen is that it breaks the carrots. Knives like these made with three layer steel you'd always want to make sure that the core steel is exposed as well. It's like a pencil. You want to sharpen it from both sides so that the core is exposed. I'm going to show you how to do it with this type of knife without, well, say, a guide like a bevel. Okay, so gear on now. What you need, what I'm going to use, is a knife without primary bevel. Here I have Tojiro classic, they used to call it Tojiro DP, owned by Jacob right behind the camera right now. It belongs to him. This is his first Japanese knife and the first knife he's ever sharpened. It sharpened a few times, so it's getting a little bit thicker. So I'm going to use this for a for this demo today. Like any thinning, uh, heavy lifting works. I use the uh, Knife for a 220 stone. You can use any, any of the coarse stones, but I, I actually like the uh, Knife for a 220 stone. So this does a lot of heavy lifting. Knife for 1000, my favorite stone. It's really nice and soft. It gives you really pretty nice, nice edge. And it's actually really easy to use as well. I will decide which one I'm gonna finish with, but the uh, I have the Hibiki 3000 or the Knife for 4000. This, this will be a great edge stone. And don't forget, I have the uh, Turing stone. And today, because I'm doing this a um, thinning without the primary bevel, I will be using some sandpaper work because the uh, you you don't have to, but you could do a blending using these sandpapers as well. Let's get started. The process that I'm going to do today is a very similar. If you've ever watched the video me thinning a knife, because there is no guide to it it could take a little bit of practice or getting used to it. But generally speaking, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen or thin this knife in sections. I will start from a place that's really close to the edge and I will lower the angle down to create the another almost like a bevel. So it's like, if you've watched my Hamaguri grind video, it's very similar process to that. First, if we were to thin a knife with a primary bevel, you will put this knife flat on the stone. Because this doesn't have any guide to it, I would actually sharpen something like slightly up. There should be a, some space on the spine. And I usually work the sections from the bottom to the, the top or the edge to the spine. Several reasons. Well, it's the most safest way so that it doesn't scratch. It doesn't scratch up a whole blade. So I'm gonna do very narrow bevel right here. This is not the edge sharpening, so it will probably be, be around five to eight degrees. I'm gonna do one section first to show you how it looks like after I thin the one part of the knife. I find myself works the best if I'm actually getting really close to the stone. So sorry I, if you can't see it from this, this camera right here. Um, I really need to come down and get really close to the edge when I'm working on something like this. Checking is really important, especially some steps like this that if you lower it too much and you start scratch whole blade, there's a recourse, but the uh, you know, I can see Jacob's been very sad, so I'll be very careful, and any, any of you too. It has gone a little bit wider, and almost comes down to the cladding line here. Not done yet, but the, you can kind of see 
the bevel being widened a little bit and pretty even. The last, that's about two, like one and a half millimeters. I'm gonna keep doing the thinning like at the very edge part. A little bit longer, I still feel like it's not as thin as it should be. From this point on, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to tell. There is a visual indication like the, uh, or the physical indication where like if you raise the burr from the backside, it's obviously it's thin enough. Uh, you've made the edge really thin. It hasn't gone to the point yet. And also the, uh, when I feel the edge, it's not there yet. I mean, there are quite different ways to test the thinness of the knife. Uh, my favorite is to cut into the carrots. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this bevel because there is a kind of bevel here, right? The, uh, it's about two millimeters from the top, from the, uh, from the edge. I'm going to sharpen basically right above that line to widen this bevel. After that, you will have another bevel up there. So I'm gonna focus on that to evens it out. So that's kind of like how I picture this process be. I'm gonna switch the stone from the uh, 220 to Naniwa diamond grit. Uh, the reason why is that the, this is a lot more precise. It's got a little bit more precision nice core stone and works really faster. Uh, my aim is to widen this bevel a little bit more wider. And in order to hit the like super precise spot, I wanted to use the stone that's actually harder. The reason why I wanted to use the harder stone like this is that the uh, softer stone often, because it's a bit softer, they often wrap around the edges where the uh, harder stones only touches on a high spot. So I can get a lot more precision from those stones. And if you're just using regular basic 220 stone, the technique still works. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but slightly lower angle to widen the bevel. It is a little bit hard to control because this knife again has a really nice taper from the spine to the edge. And it's really easy to mess with the finish. So if you're doing this at home, especially with the stones like a 220 grits and stuff, just don't expect the knife to be super, super clean. You will have a bit of scratches on the side of knife. I probably would have some of the uh, scratches on the side as well. This main purpose is really for the knife to function better, right? So, and I will show you the reason why the first beginning of the video I was showing you about the, uh, some sandpapers, you could use sandpapers to even those, the, uh, even those scratches out as well. So oh, if your knife doesn't need thin as much, this is probably where you would stop and you can stop at. But I'll show you on the back side, I will do a little bit more techniques, how, how to thin whole entire blade. And I will show you how to restore the scratches that you uh, created on the blade as well. It's basically the same thing as I was doing earlier. Um, get the uh, coarse stone, nice splash of water and angle it up around say, five to eight de depends on. So basically I'm trying to aim at this bevel that the uh, he created before, especially for those people who has not, who has not sharpened ambidextrously, this could be a, a very awkward. So if you're not comfortable doing ambidextrously, you can definitely do it like this. Very low angle. Like this. That's where I'm working on right now. Basically, if I keep working at this angle, it will just go down towards the edge. So this is a little bit high spot. So I'm going to just keep working, keep sharpening at this particular angle. I sharpen until this beveling is gone. So I've done the same thinning on the, uh, on the other side as the, the first side, but now I'm going to lower the angle a little bit more and show you how the scratch patterns will look like. So this is really great example. This is the first side I did. It's probably okay for the knife that doesn't need a lot of thinning. Uh, this side, I lower the angle so much more so that it start to, you can start to see the scratch patterns up here. So I could keep going often. I would keep going for the little bit of part, like the tip part, but the, it's pretty thin 
right here along the uh, back side. Something to uh, mention, you don't have to worry too much if this line is not straight. Few things that you can make this line straight. You have really hard stone and just keep at the same angle. It will eventually become a straight line. I wouldn't worry about it at this point, but you could make it, it the uh, straight line as well. But because of the, how the knives are made, especially something like you know handmade knives as well as the uh, manufacturer blades, they, uh, they look really nice and even, but oftentimes there is like a tiny bit of wobble that shows up on the, on the blade when you're sharpening it. So I wouldn't worry too much about this, this like line not being straight. I'm gonna use the uh, Nightwear 1000 to work on the, again, the back side. This is where I usually gonna stop uh, on the stone when it comes to thinning, especially the uh, knife without the bevels. Practically speaking, we often actually put this on the bell sander so that the, uh, it will give very similar finish to the uh, this original finish. Today, because I'm doing it all by hand, I'm going to do the sandpaper job. So what I'm going to do is grab a, a sandpaper. This is 220 waterproof sandpaper, wet them. So I'm gonna work on it vertically because it's, it's the safest. Uh, if you want to keep this original grain, you can definitely go this way for safety and convenience purpose, I'm just gonna go this way. You do it wet sanding. You don't wanna do it dry sanding. It, it, it will create the, uh, so much deeper scratches with the uh, dry sanding. There, I think it's pretty good. You can still see a little bit of beveling here, but it's blended pretty nicely. So if you're doing this lower bevel thinning and successfully done it, you could definitely polish this a, uh, this bevel really nice and shiny as well. That's, that's up to you. All you need to do is to put the edge back on. Well, since I have the knife for 1000 stone, I am going to put the edge on this one. Unlike thinning, it is so much higher angle, right? The, you know, 15 degrees from both ends. Sharpen them until you raise a burr. So once you thin your knife, it's so much easier and faster to sharpen or the raise the burr. Then I'm gonna finish with something something a little bit higher, grit. So there's the request to finish this knife at 3000 grit. Again, same thing, same angle as you were sharpening and raise the burr with the 1000 grit. Taking the burr off. Oh, this knife, it's, it's got a denim, so I can strop it very nicely with that. Yeah, if you're doing it at home, I would probably gonna do the same method on both sides. That's how you could thin a knife without the primary bevel. A lot of you requested to show you how to do this thinning without primary bevel. So if you wanna know more about the other techniques, leave it in the comment. We'll, uh, we'll try to cover that. If you wanna learn more about sharpening, check out this playlist. Thanks for watching.